Uh, so my name is Hoàng, and uh, I would like to thank everybody for coming here. So uh, um, I would first st uh, start my talk by uh, talking so about some um, classic results of uh, elementary flavor in uh, um, arithmetic Ramsey theory. And after that, I will talk about their, about their relation with the primes. So one of the earliest results in uh, Ramsey theory is uh, Schur's theorem. So in 1916, uh, Schur proved that uh, if the set of um, all positive <coughs> integers is finitely colored, which is the same thing as uh, finitely partitioned, if you want. So <coughs> we can always find a monochromatic triple uh, x, y, and z. So that the sum of two, uh, so x and y, the sum of x and y is equal to z. And another classic uh, result of uh, Ramsey, th Ramsey theory is um, van der Waarden. Right. In 1927. So, so if the integers are finitely uh, colored, then we can always find an, uh, uh, for, so for every k, we can find a, a monochromatic uh, arithmetic arithmetic progression of length k. <coughs> and so, and right after that, so uh, Brouwer at the uh, Add a uh, strengthening to uh, Van der Waerden's theorem, namely that we may require so not only the arithmetic progression but also so this, this step, right, to be of the same <coughs> color. And uh, <coughs> so Rado in the thirties. Uh, completely, so these are about uh, like linear forms, like l uh, linear forms, right? And so rather completely determine uh, uh, all systems of equations. So we have a matrix A, right, and a vector x. Uh, so we want um, uh, our system of equations that are partition regular, namely that um, for for every finite coloring of the positive integers. We can always find a monochromatic solution to this uh, system of equations. Uh, so these uh, these theorems uh, are about uh, uh, partition of uh, integers. So in Ramsey theory, there's an another class of theorems, namely density uh, theorems about um, sets of positive density. I'm sorry? What does it mean, Oh, so he gave a uh, um, necessary and um, sufficient condition for a matrix A, so that uh, this, uh, this condition is satis <coughs> satisfied. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, I can write it, out, it down if you want, but like, it will take like uh, two more minutes, but it's elementary, so. Uh, 
Uh, yes. Uh, actually, what Rado did is, yeah, he he also fa he found um, all partition regular systems that are homogeneous, but also non-homogeneous ones. But the homogeneous ones are more difficult. So, uh, so let's move on to uh, density type theorems. So, Roth uh, proved the following: um, if we have a set of positive um, density inside the integers. Uh, then this set must contain an arithmetic progression of length 3. And similarly, Similarity's theorem is the uh, gener generali generalization of Ross theorem for longer arithmetic progressions, but uh, it's uh, it's much more difficult. So it's the same thing, uh, and we says that if we have a positive density, then uh, the set uh, must contain arithmetic progressions of length k for every k. <coughs> and uh, let me let me mention um, like uh, a couple of other results about uh, sets of um, uh, positive density. Oh, so f uh, first I should mention that so uh, density results are stronger than partition results, but not every partition result has a density counterpart. For example, like we don't have a density analog of uh, Schur's theorem, because if you take the set of all numbers that are congruent to 1 modulo 3, then such, a, uh, uh, such an, a, an equation is not solvable in the set of numbers congruent to 1 modulo, th modulo 3. Uh, so there's a couple of um, other resu results about uh, sets of uh, positive density. So it is a, a um, uh, fact uh, discovered uh, independ independently by um, uh, Sarkozy and Furstenberg. <coughs> so if you have a set of positive density, <coughs> then uh, there is, um, we can find two distinct elements inside a whose difference is a perfect square. So what is special about these squares? So we can uh, replace these, these squares by other sets, uh, other, other interesting sets of arithmetic nature. So for example, you can replace it by uh, the shifted primes, right? And, you, uh, and in, gen in general, you can replace it by a polynomial h, which is um, uh, it has, has the property that H has roots every modulus. So it's easy, by, uh, co it's easy to see that this um, uh, condition is necessary, but it also turns out that it is uh, sufficient. And there's, um, <coughs> and there, uh, there's also um, similar criteria for polynomials uh, in prime variables, if you like, and so uh, and we, we we also have uh, objects like weir weird objects like this, where alpha is irrational. Uh, so this kind of things comes from a much wider class uh, studied by ergodic theorists uh, called uh, generalized polynomials or bracket uh, polynomials. So so far we 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 haven't talked uh, um, we haven't talked about the primes yet. So uh, and so our density results cannot be applied to the primes because the primes are of uh, density zero inside the integers. Uh, so Green <coughs> uh, proved the uh, the following called Ross theorem for the primes. So if we have a set of uh, positive relative density inside the primes, then still we can find an arithmetic progression of length 3 inside 
that's it. <coughs> and uh, after that, green and tau uh, prove that um, we can find arithmetic progression of arbitrary length. inside any set of positive density. <coughs> so uh, let me just talk briefly about the machinery uh, used by Green and Tao to deduce this kind of results. So <coughs> they devised something they call a transference principle. which allows us to, um, to, to treat the primes or the weighted primes as a uh, dense subset of the integers. <coughs> and then uh, we can just use results uh, about the integers as a black box, as a black box to deduce the, result, the corresponding result for the primes. So here, uh, Green's um, transference principle uh, uh, use, uses tools from harmonic analysis. But uh, for the more general results, Green and Tao's transference principle uh, uses idea, ideas from uh, uh, ergodic theory. <coughs> and so one essential tool in um, a transference principle is a decomposition result. So uh, let, let us take, for example, Simeridi's theorem. So uh, we can reformulate it uh, as follows. So instead of a set of um, positive density, we work with a function uh, on a very large interval, <coughs> which is bounded and uh, whose average is positive. And Simeridi's theorem says that uh, uh, the following, so E stands for the average. <coughs> so the average of this expression, so which is the product of F over all arithmetic progressions inside uh, N. <coughs> stays uh, is bounded from below by a constant depending on delta alone right so this so similarity is theorem is about um, is this statement for uh, functions bounded between 0 and 1 and so we want to generalize this to functions Not necessarily bounded by one, but uh, bounded by another function. Uh, <coughs> when nu is some object called Isidore Renault measure, <coughs> so which is um, which is obviously not on the constant function, but which is uh, very <coughs> very close to. Uh, the constant function and which uh, fluctuates around the constant function so <coughs> and so so far we so so if you want to, uh, to apply this to the primes so it suffices to find such a new a uh, function f supported on primes and so this way we have located an arithmetic progression on the primes so how we how do we deduce such a statement for fun bounded functions? 
two functions bounded by another function. So, um, so that's where uh, composi the composition, composition results come into uh, scene. So, um, <coughs> so <coughs> such a function f can always be decomposed as two parts, where the first part is um, bounded, right? And the second, the, the second part is not necessarily bounded, but it is small in a norm. So here, call the Gauss Gauss norm, which is sensitive to counting con linear configurations. So if we expand this, we are going to see that the main term is uh, <coughs> because all the other terms involve F2, and which is small because the norm, because F2 is uh, uniform. So we see that this, this is the main contribution of this. And so this is uh, big, <coughs> thanks to Semerides' theorem. Uh, so this um, the machinery uh, that Green and Tao devised uh, to find um, arithmetic progression inside the primes. So in view of um, the method, so it's, it's natural to ask for other linear configura configurations. And not, not linear, but like um, additive structures inside the primes. So for example, uh, it is uh, a theorem of mine. Uh, which is uh, Shakuzi's prime, Shakuzi's theorem for the primes, namely that if you have uh, have a set of uh, positive density, and H has the properties that I, uh, it has roots every modulus, then there exist uh, two elements of A. is h of n for some n. <coughs> and so in view of Bradow's theorem, it's uh, natural to ask the following question. <coughs> uh, find all <coughs> uh, partition <coughs> all systems. partition regular equations of, of equations regular over the Primes. <coughs> and it is uh, something that I just proved last week. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> so suppose we have a system of equations uh, satisfying Rado's. Um, conditions okay. 
then in fact we can uh, solve it in any uh, Oh, so this this class of polynomials is uh, is wider than the class yeah, of all. So you're putting a local condition which they don't buy. Yeah. They so have to say that there's no constant. Right. So this is more general than that. <coughs> so if we have a system of uh, equations that satisfy Radov's uh, condition, which means partition regularity over the integers, then it is also partition regular. over the shifted times. So for example, uh, So, for example, uh, if we partition like uh, if uh, the primes are finitely colored, then there's an arrest a monochromatic progression. And furthermore, uh, so, uh, inside uh, inside what well, uh, like so, these guys are all primes, right? And furthermore, uh, d is a step plus one is also prime and also is also of the same color. So Radov's theorem uh, is about um, linear um, um, partition regular linear systems, but. Uh, Actually, there are uh, partition regular systems of higher order. So it is a theorem of uh, Bergson. <coughs> it's finite the color. <coughs> then there exists a monochromatic triple. such that x uh, plus y squared is equal to z. Right. So which is uh, similar to Sarkozy's theorem, right? But here we require that y uh, is also of the same color as um, <coughs> x and z. So in contrast with, uh, in contrast with uh, Radov's theorem, which completely classified all linear systems that are um, partition regular. So the understanding of uh, partition regular systems of higher order is uh, so it is still open. So yeah, so, so I would like to investigate uh, this kind of questions and how they can be transferred to the primes. So for example, um, is it true that if we, if we uh, color the prime, finitely color the primes, is it true that we can always find um, a solution to this e equation, a monochromatic solution to this equation. Probably not, uh, Peter. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> well, okay. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's it. Oh, so in my theorem, so I used um, uh, so Green Tau's approach. So uh, actually, in the original proof of Green Tau, the proof of the decomposition result is very like uh, complicated. And after that, uh, Gauss and other people in computer science 
Rangel and other people came up with like, much simpler proofs of the okay. decomposition design. So I just. Uh, yeah. But you're not using directly first converged methods. What's that? You're not using first converged methods directly. Directly in what? In the primes so or what? Or and the density theorem, like the one up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Your, your theorem is number zero. Yeah, it is true for the integers. So Furstenberg's method is uh, like uh, can give you very general results, but it only works for the integers. But if it works with the primes. Uh, but uh, like theorem zero nine uh, very much is in the Bogelson world, except that you've got H of n has you put a local condition to ensure there's no uh, obstruction. Yeah, but our set it is inside the primes. A uh, is inside the primes. Oh, P is P. Oh, oh yeah. my apologies. Yeah. So eventually the problem reduces to understanding local, locally local obstructions. So what's the difference between positive density and your partition regulars? It's, it's more restricted partition regulars. So how do you use the, the Green Tau approach? So basically you... Yeah, so it's a slightly different. Uh, no, actually I, I think I only use Rado's theorem as a black box. Like... I use Rado's theorem as a black box, but not quite. But not quite. But <laughs> <laughs> so you don't derive it from the positive density results? No, we have to like, uh, so we have to rewrite uh, Rado's theorem as a slightly different, fo different form. So, so, so said about, um, statement about sets of positive density is that like we can rewrite it as a function whose, uh, whose, uh, then whose average is uh, positive, right? Is uh, stays away from. So a coloring statement is about like k functions and adding up to one if you want. So my question is whether you have a consequence principle instead of looking at positive density of, of pseudo random sets, you would look at say partition. Uh, you, you would put it in the in the language of partition regular. Uh, partition regular property. So if you have a partition regular property uh, for the set of all integers, mm -hmm. would it carry over in the context of, uh, of say, pseudo-random sets in, in some sense? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah. you have the, the, the research system. How, how does the green tail stuff come in? Oh, so I just, uh, like, uh <coughs> so here you want to, to decompose it is into two parts, right? And here, so here is a, this is like a function, like a bounded function, and this is a uniform function. And suppose here I have uh, k functions. Uh, so I want to decompose them simultaneously. So h f i is equal, and I want that. Uh, is bigger than some constant, so that this corresponds to a statement about um, a coloring. You have k colors, right? And on the hi's are uniform. I still don't quite understand how you go from from the integers to the primes because Yeah, but then we, then we find like functions supported in the primes. Like the first paper. No, actually, like uh, I ut it also utilized like uh, like uh, Green Tau's big results on linear equations in the primes. You need that? Yeah, I don't need no, that. The, the I don't need the fact that yeah, like, yeah, like this thing. It? Yeah, I don't need that. Um, no. So then you're not using the same. <laughs> 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 so guys, I think we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the results are about primes. Some of them are to primes. So yeah, it's because the primes actually have. It's because of local obstructions. So and the question is, in terms of primes, you took some. Let's take. I mean, what kind of sets does this actually work? For?